Hey everyone, Ben here again with another full dome tutorial. And uh, as we're all stuck at home right now and not able to visit our beloved domes, I figured it would be a good idea to um, share a method to convert a dome master to an equirectangular video so that you can share your video online um, in a 360 player or in, in VR. Um, I've gone over before how to turn an equirectangular image into a dome master, so this is basically just going to be the reverse of that. And it's actually a fairly simple procedure uh, using Adobe After Effects, which is what I am going to be using today, um, due to the fact that uh, these 360 conversion plugins are now built into After Effects. So let's go ahead and get started very quickly here. We're going to go ahead and import some dome master footage. And I'm going to import a file here. There it is. Okay. Here's my Dome Master footage, and uh, you can see it already created a comp for that. So Dome Master footage obviously is a circular image in a one by one aspect ratio, um, a circular fisheye image here. And uh, so you can see that this is just a short uh, 4K by 4K animation. Now to convert this to equirectangular, as I said before, we're going to use the VR converter effect. So let's go up to our effects menu and down here uh, in immersive video, which is built into the Adobe CC versions, I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, VR converter effect. And right away, it's going to take, uh, going to assume that that image is a 2D source, but we want to tell it that it is a fisheye full dome source. So we're going to click this first input drop down and select fisheye full dome and it correctly assumed that we want an equirectangular 2x1 output. Now, the issue here is that it is putting the dome master right at the front of this equirectangular, and we kind of want it to be up above the viewer, just like as if they were sitting in a dome. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a reorient camera view tools, and we're going to change the tilt. And you can see if I drag this, um, right now it's tilting it down uh, so that the image is going to the bottom of the equirectangular image, and that's not exactly what we want. Um, we could keep continue going until it all tilts all the way back, uh, but let's go ahead and tilt into the negative numbers here. And you might assume that what we want is negative 90, so that it's taking up the entire top portion of this equirectangular frame. Now, the problem with this is that that means anyone who is looking at this, especially in a headset, is going to have to tilt their head really far back um, and as if they were in a flat dome. But to simulate uh, other domes that are tilted, such as the dome at the Museum of Discovery where I work, uh, you're going to want to tilt that to the front of the equirectangular image. And so that means we're going to need a value less than 90. And so I know my dome is tilted at 20 degrees. So if I take 20 degrees from that 90, I'm going to get 60. So if I type in negative 60 instead of negative 90, that's going to tilt the image down 20 degrees into the front of the image. And we can uh, export a frame from this. So if I go to composition, save frame as file, <coughs> going to ask me where to save it. Um, okay, and we can actually change this from a Photoshop output to a JPEG or PNG. This is going to just be a test frame, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit OK and render this frame out. Great. So now I'm going to actually use a program. Let's see, let me get this open called GoPro VR Player. And this is a free program available, the uh, VR uh, Player program. Let's see, where did it open? Here it is, okay. So there's our VR Player. And if I just go ahead and drag my frame onto this, uh, let's go find that frame. All right, so if we drag our Eck rectangular frame here, we can check this out in 360 VR. 
And here we can see that we've got what seems to be sort of a dome image floating in the air, but it is tilted forward, which will make it a lot easier to uh, check out in VR. Okay. So right now this leaves the bottom of the, the virtual dome, if you will, just a black hole with nothing, nothing there to look at, um, which is fine. But let's say you want to simulate uh, the feeling of actually being inside of a dome. And to do that, I'm going to use a 360 image of the inside of my dome. And so let's go ahead and go back to our project and import another file. And this file is going to be, as I said, a panorama of the inside of my dome. And let's go ahead and uncheck Create Composition. And I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, image available for you to use if you would like to. And let's hit open, uh, ignore the alpha. All right. So now if we open that, you can see that this is a 360 panorama of the inside of our dome. Now there's a couple of parts missing that I didn't bother photographing uh, because I was going to use it specifically for this purpose. You can see the top portion of the image is missing. We're going to replace this dome image with our dome master anyways. And the bottom portion of this is missing as well. And this is just a good place that you could put your logo or any other information that you want down in that bottom portion. Or just make a black uh, ma circular mask or something. Um, doesn't really matter. All right, let's go ahead and close that and combine these two. So I'm going to pull this down into my composition below the Dome Master frame. And you can see that it is much larger than our frame. So let's go ahead and go back to our Dome Master, go to the Effect Controls. And here's where that output frame width is set. And since this was a 4K by 4K image, it just assumed a 4K. Um, that's probably going to be fine for online viewing 4K by 2K. So I'm just going to scale this to fit this frame. So if I go to Layer, Transform, Fit to Comp, it scales it down. Now, one issue that you'll see right away is that we are facing the seat itself. So we're facing the back of the dome. So what we want to do is rotate this image around. And one way to do that is actually to use another immersive video effect. So if I go to the effects and go to immersive video, oops, and we can use the VR rotate sphere. Since this is a two by one echo rectangular, it's technically a VR uh, image. So we can use that. And then we will uh, rotate our image. So we're going to use the pan option this time to pan this from left to right. And I am just going to type in 180 because I know I want it to flip all the way around. And once I do that, now you can see that it is oriented similarly to our Dome Master image. Now we're going to have to tweak this Dome Master image a little bit to get it to fit onto the virtual screen. Um, as the dome itself is actually a little bit less than 180 degrees field of view. So let's go ahead and go back to our procedural. And we can change this field of view option here. So if I start dragging that down, you'll see that it starts to fit on the dome. And I think from my testing, I did about 152 degrees. And now if we look closely, we can see that it's not quite lining up with the back. And so uh, I think this might have something to do with uh, the tilt of the camera, although it looks pretty vertical, I'm not quite sure. But I just basically fiddled with this tilt value until that fit in the frame. And if we, it looks like we need to tilt it back some more. So that's pretty good there. Yeah, I'd say that looks pretty decent. And the last couple of steps are just some final steps to make this look uh, the way that I want it to. Um, this dome image is pretty bright, and as you, if you've been in a dome, you probably know that domes are fairly dark environments. So I'm just going to add some color correction to that so that we can uh, 
turn the uh, brightness of that down. So let's go ahead and go to the brightness and contrast effect. And I'm basically just going to drag this brightness all the way down. And that still gives us a pretty good image. In fact, I might just bump up the contrast here. And you can play with this to, to whatever fits your taste and aesthetic. Um, as I said before, you can add a logo at the bottom here. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to import another image. And this image is basically just this circular badge image. So you could imagine this could be a logo or the title of the piece, that kind of thing. So let me open that. And I'm going to drag that on top of my dome panel, above the dome panel. And you can see it here. And we're going to use another VR effect. So let's go to Immersive Video and VR Plane to Sphere. So what this does is it takes a planar image, just a flat image, and applies spherical distortion to it. So if we hit that, uh, you can see that it seems to grow in size, but we want to move it down. But we're not going to actually physically move the layer here. What we're going to do is we're going to change where it's being projected onto this 360 sphere. So again, we'll rotate projection. There's actually two options here, rotate source and rotate projection. If we rotate source, you can see that it just kind of flips the uh, image around in 3D space, which is pretty cool. But that's not exactly what we want. So we want to rotate projection. And for this one, I'm just going to tilt the projection down so that it is at the bottom of the frame. And if we go down, we can see that that should be at 90 degrees to hit the bottom. And now you can see it stretched all the way across the bottom here. And here we go. We've got our final composition. So let's go ahead and save this frame again to test it out. And I'm going to choose a JPEG. And that'll work. So let's render that frame out. Excellent. And we will bring back our GoPro VR player. And now, let's go ahead and pull that image in once again. That loads up. And now we are in our virtual dome with our dome master above us. And you can see we've got our little logo there. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. I know in that echo rectangular image, it seems to take up quite a bit of that frame. Um, but it's actually just down there if you look down. And you can feel free to take this image and, you know, Photoshop it, uh, do whatever modifications you might want to do to make it look a little bit better. I might even make this a bit darker, um, perhaps mask out some areas, that kind of thing, just to make it a little bit prettier. Um, but there you go. That's the basic uh, procedure for outputting your Dome Master to an echo rectangular. And the next part of this actually is going to be uh, rendering this out. And so to do that, I'm going to use Adobe Media Encoder. So let's go ahead and open Media Encoder. Okay, now with Media Encoder open, um, let's go ahead and go back to After Effects very quickly and save our project. It's always important to save. So we'll call this Dome master to 360 VR. Okay, save that and go back to Media Encoder now. And let's go ahead and add our project. So click the plus button here and let's go find our project. So it's adding our project now. All right, here's our project, and we select the composition that we want to render. Hit OK. Excellent, and let's go ahead and go into the render settings. Okay, now with our render settings open, we can change some render settings that we might want. I'm going to go ahead and check Use Maximum Render Quality. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the VR video option. And basically what this does is it adds some metadata into the, v the video file 
so that uh, online services such as YouTube or Facebook will recognize this as a 360 VR video. So go ahead and check that. And for frame layout, we want to leave this at monoscopic. Oops, there we go, monoscopic. And leave the horizontal field of view at 360. And now from here, we can hit OK and render. Okay, now that our render is finished, let's go ahead and check out the final results. So we're gonna pull over our GoPro VR player once again and drag our newly rendered dome VR view. So let's drop that in here. And here we go, we've got our virtual dome with our dome video playing above us. And uh, yeah, looks pretty great, I think. So, this is, uh, like I said, a, just a really good way to share your dome content online in a virtual dome setting. And you can see our little logo patch down there. Um, looks pretty good to me. So from here, you could upload this to Facebook, uh, YouTube, whatever platform of your choosing, um, and let people enjoy your dome masterpieces in a virtual dome setting. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and uh, we'll see you for the next one.